If you've been listening to the show for the past six months, you've been hearing me talk about a personal project I'm doing that I was going to launch on Kickstarter called the Drifting Moon Tarot. It's a tarot deck and it is live on Kickstarter right now. It is currently up and I just wanted to make that announcement. A tarot deck is a deck of cards that each card has a different theme. And my job as an illustrator was to figure out the stories and the symbols and the meanings behind these cards and the different themes. And so it was a really fun, almost like a narrative kind of project, but applying it to a deck of cards. And so I'd love for you guys to go check those out on Kickstarter. We do have a link in the show notes here on this episode, and you could also go to Kickstarter and just look up Drifting Moon Tarot. As you know, us here at Three Point Perspective, we are very big on artists making projects that they are passionate about. And the only way these projects work is if you guys support them. We love the idea of taking a little bit of power away from the big companies and, and giving it back to the artists. And that's what these things are. That's what this project is for me. It took the last six months off of commercial work just to do this project. Project. And uh, so I would love to ask for your support and your help. And uh, if you like the project, share it around. I would really, really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Three Point Perspective, the podcast about illustration, how to do it, how to make a living at it, and how to make an impact in the world with your art. I'm Jake Parker. And I'm Will Terry. And Lee White is out on assignment today, but today we are interviewing Mesa Schumacher. Yes, this is was such a great interview because we I, we haven't ever dived deep, dove deep, dive deep. I don't know. We haven't ever <laughs> gotten deep on Divin. the subject of like medical illustration, that whole world of like very representational, like scientific illustration stuff. And wow, I feel like we we lucked out having her contact us <laughs> to call us out and say, you guys are neglecting this subject. And, um, and she didn't want to come on the, I mean, she didn't, she wasn't emailing to come on to the show, but I was like, we have to have her on. We got to talk to her. And so, yeah. yeah, she is, Mesa Schumacher is a professional like science illustrator and you go check out her website, Mesa Schumacher, Schumacher.com. Um, and you'll see she has, um, medical art, uh, like science, microbiology art, um, animal art, all different, you know, fish, mammals. All kinds of cutaways of brains Cut away, yes. and hearts it's, and It is so, so impressive. Yeah. And so she just, this is a great, a great interview. Um, what was, what was like one of your main takeaways from this interview? Um, well, having had a, a teacher at, um, in, in my art school, Mm-hmm. who was a medical illustrator, I knew a lot about the field mm-hmm. and she confirmed a lot of things that I had learned along the way. Mm-hmm. Um, but how prolific she is and and what a great living you can make mm-hmm. doing this probably mm-hmm. stuck out for me because I'm always, I always think about it in terms of the, the listener. And I think a lot of our listeners are trying to figure out how they can have a career in art. And this yeah. is definitely a way to do it. Yeah. Well, and, and the thing is, is, Anytime you have a, a, a need for something and not enough, or a, a demand for something and not enough um, people there to f- fill it, mm-hmm. you're gonna you're gonna be in a good spot if you're a person that can supply you know that demand, right? Yeah. And medical illustration is an area, or science illustration is an area where there's a lot of need, and there's more and more so every year. And uh, and if you're able to do anything in that regard. Um, you're going to, you're going to be a very busy illustrator. So, Mm -hmm. uh, it's cool. I, I, uh, I got nothing else here. Let's just move right in. Let's move right right into this interview. Let's get on it. All right, Mesa. Nice to have you joining us here. This is, this is great for you to come onto the podcast. And I got to say, um, we, we got an email from you and it was you taking issue or maybe a little bit of umbrage or something with the, with what we, with, uh, you know, a, a certain perspective or, or, or a point of view on. Let, on let's il- face it. It was, it was, it was Lee. Okay. It was mostly Lee. Right. <laughs> it was so. mostly Lee, to be fair. Yeah. So yeah. do you want to, um, we'll just start <laughs> off with, tell us who you are, what you do, uh, where you're located, and then we'll get into Let's talk about um, sort of what your email was saying. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess I'm here to defend the honor, I guess, of science and medical artists. Um, <laughs> I, I'm Mesa Schumacher. Um, I'm, I'm currently uh, in Fiji, 
uh, I've been living here for a little bit and I'm going to be living here for a few years more. Um, but I'm mm-hmm. from Seattle and I, I kind of call Seattle and Washington DC home bases when I'm in the U S. Um, and I've, I've been a science artist for about 15 years. Um, and that, that has ranged from working in museums, um, and aquariums, zoos, to hospitals, doing surgical manuals, to 3D animation, 2D animation for patient education, um, puzzles, educational board games, um, (laughs) signs, reconstructions, stuff in ZBrush, um, paleo art, archaeological art. It just... uh, just anything that has to do with science and visualizing mm-hmm. it. Um, <laughs> yeah, if, uh, I've been really lucky to have my toe in a lot of it. Um, I got to say, I think, it, oh, go ahead, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was I just going to say, what originally said was it was boring, and that's where <laughs> I was like yelling at my boring phone. <laughs> no, it's, it's so exciting. Um, yeah, I, I want. I was just going to butt in really quick. I want people yeah. to go to your website, mesaschumacher.com, and it's s. It's M E S A S C H U M A C H E R Schumacher, and your website is is a just a dang good like website for oh thanks <laughs> a for the amount of ki- different kinds of illustration that you do. Um, it's organized really well, but um, um, you've got great art, you've got great presentation, and um, and so if you guys you know, pause this, or if you're, um, if you can want to look at something while you're listening, just go scroll through that website and get a good idea of what, what you're doing. Here. It's just a, you're really great illustrator. That's for sure. So your email, I want to read just, um, just a, a section of it. Um, it says here, you know, I like the podcast. You guys are, are great, whatever. <laughs> uh, and, and she said, I, uh, I realize this isn't really a question, maybe more of an accusation. Maybe it's a public service announcement. Anyhow, a few times throughout the years, I've heard you guys disparage work in scientific and medical illustration, uh, dental whiteboard videos in your most recent episode with Cam Kendall. And I remember an episode a while back with Lee talking about a fellow student doing museum illustration. So boring, right? No way. Totally disagree, but I realize that um, is I realize that is part of the problem. People just don't know. So um, I, I got to say, with the cam thing too, it, it did sound like you know he had to slum it and do uh, you know dentist illustrations for a while until I mean, he got not to the all dental whiteboard videos are going to be the most exciting thing ever. Right. Not not every job is like right. the most exciting exciting thing ever. <laughs> right. But you really did call out Lee White, and yeah, I got to say. Uh, my, and I noticed my, he hasn't shown up. Yeah, so, so. he's smart. He's smart. He's smart. <laughs> he's away on assignment for for today, and maybe he'll want to come on later and and defend himself or something. <laughs> but um, I want to say my experience with uh, with this is I actually worked in a museum um, in really? the early years of my career. Yeah, the uh, Mesa, it's the the Arizona Muse- the Arizona Museum of Natural History. Um, is the current title of it. Back then, 20 years ago, it was called the Mesa Southwest Museum. And they had built this giant um, dinosaur wing uh, addition to it. And it was all like Arizona-based prehistoric animals and more. Um, And they needed like, um, they had a couple of muralists and they just needed like an assistant. I was young and I was learning. And so there's a few paintings on the wall of, prehistoric animals that I've done that are iffy, but it was a a huge learning experience. And that's when I was like, um, I was like, dang, this could be a track, like a track for an illustrator. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't entirely for me because, um, I had my heart set on comics and like, you know, storytelling stuff, but I love dipping my toe into that world. And, uh, and so I just want to, you know, yeah. frame this as where I'm coming from, but I want to hear like, what's your defense of why it's not a boring job. It's not a boring path and, and tell us uh, kind of what you're thinking there. 
Well, it's, it's interesting. You mentioned storytelling, you know, mm-hmm. and I, you guys are all about storytelling and that's, that's kind of how I found you. I don't really know. I don't remember at this point if I found your podcast first or SBS, okay. but, um, but I found you cause I was interested in doing some, uh, children's book projects myself. So mm-hmm. I was kind of trying to, um, fill in some art holes, I guess. Uh, yeah. I didn't go to art school. Um, so I, I have a, <laughs> a very okay. cobbled together education. <laughs> um, so, uh, so my, I feel like I missed some stuff, you know, along the way. Mm-hmm. So that's been really helpful. So thank you guys for, you know, for your service there. <laughs> Filling in um, the gaps. Yeah. And I, well, I think that's actually pretty typical of a lot of science artists. Um, mm-hmm. Some people come from the art side and they've been to art school and they just didn't quite fit in a different mm-hmm. place. And then they found this and this was kind of their calling you know, mm-hmm. and uh, I I kind of came from the science side. I was kind of on a science track, and then I discovered that this was a career, and I immediately dropped everything else to um, pursue it because I felt like, oh my gosh, this is what I've actually been doing with my life for mm. twenty two years or whatever. And <laughs> and uh, now I actually realize you can make money off of it, and so that's what I'll be doing for the rest of my time on Earth. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, but it's um. Science art is basically anything that explains science. And that that can be, you know, anything from technical illustrations, showing how you put things together to, um, you know, massive murals, like you're talking about with paleontological reconstructions and um, to animation of cells and molecules flying around and what they do um, to uh, teaching surgeons how to do a surgery. Um, mm. through illustration, uh, which is still pretty important um, mm-hmm. uh, to, and, and there's so many different little niches to a lot of kind of more naturalist work to actually in comics, there's a whole world of medicine comics. There's a, there's a conference called graphic medicine and there, there's all these, you know, there's this whole world of comic artists who function in a space of either healthcare workers or um, patients going through diseases and they're, they're, you know, expressing their journeys through uh, usually autobiographical comics in that uh, realm. But so it's, it's like, it's a really broad tent and, um, and there's kind of a lot of room to maneuver within it into the places that people like. And I've, I fell in love with it because I, I feel like I like, I love science. I love mm-hmm. learning about things. I love digging into things. But what I really loved was taking all this stuff, kind of throwing it into a pot and then trying to explain it and pull out stories and tell those stories of science in a way that people could understand Mm. um, whoever my audience was, whether Mm. my audience was someone really technical or someone really lay person. So um, uh, yeah, it's, it's been really fun doing that. And I, I, I'm pretty broad. I'm a real generalist. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a freelancer and I, I started freelancing in college uh, as soon as I realized what this was. So I started, mm-hmm. you know, I'd go to my science professors and I would say, I'll do one illustration for you and you teach me how to do this. And then then mm-hmm. next one you're going to pay me. And so that <laughs> was how I first started. <laughs> and uh, but cool. then I kind of got my first jobs that way and got my foot into some stuff and um, started a freelance business. And then I went on to go and do some internships um, at museums, at National Geographic, Mm-hmm. and kind of built my network out. And uh, then I went back to grad school to specialize in medical illustration. <laughs> it's a little bit more, um, it is just a little bit more specialization. You need to know more about uh, medicine. So I, I went to a master's program in Johns Hopkins Medical School. So you're like mm-hmm. in there with the doctor or the future doctors and uh, doing anatomy lab with them. And, and um, you spend a whole year going to surgeries and drawing kind of over the surgeon's back. So, uh, wow. yeah. Um, yeah, before we got on here, Jake was asking, are you in the hospital? I'm not in the hospital. I'm in my house. But uh, but there's a lot of medical illustrators who work embedded in hospitals. So if you're going into surgery, there may be an artist in there while you're asleep drawing, you know, your pancreas. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so you, you, you probably life. meet them before you go to sleep. <laughs> Usually, like, you come in before, so they know. Uh-huh. But, <laughs> they don't just yeah. sneak wow. in there. <laughs> But did, we're in did, weird places. So yeah. did you did you um, ever um, take any um, zoology or anatomy, like uh, human anatomy? In, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've actually been really lucky on that front. 
Um, so I, I was kind of an art kid. I did mm-hmm. a lot of art growing up, but I also did a lot of biology and I didn't really, I didn't really have consistent art mentors. I had a couple of people say, Oh, you should get a portfolio together and go to art school. But I didn't, I didn't really feel like I had anything to say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I had a voice, you know, right. I don't know if anyone else <laughs> out there is having that problem, but um, <laughs> it was pretty, I don't know. Uh, I, I've always so like for you, it people. was, it was more so, like, <coughs> like, I just want to make interest or like, I just want to make images at that Not point, it was like, I just want to draw what I see. Like, I yeah, just, yeah. I, I was very drawn to like observational drawing and sketching. Mm-hmm. And um, though I did do a lot of comicking in my mm-hmm. notes, I comicked okay. all my notes. So I'd have like, you know, blank pages. And then I do kind of Larry Gonick style explainer comics mm-hmm. for all my high school classes. So I went off to college um, and I thought I was going to do biology or pre-med or something and um, started BioCore. And immediately as a freshman, I was miserable kind of. Um, and it just, uh, I went to, you know, university that had a really weeder out program and um, mm-hmm. I wasn't sure about what I was doing. And it just felt like I'm way too flitty to do a PhD and mm-hmm. commit seven years of my life to something really tiny and um, specific. And I, I'm not sure I want to be a doctor in this current age. And um, so I kept kind of changing my major to less and less intense things from like biology to human biology to anthropology, like read less (laughs) credits. Mm -hmm. So more exploration. And um, uh, then halfway through college, I got, um, I applied for a scholarship to go to South America and work on a dig site, an archeological site. And I got it. So I went down there for the summer and it was awesome. But (laughs) besides all the fun running around and, you know, digging and crawling through caves and stuff um, that we got to do in the evenings, they had us draw finds, draw artifacts. Mm -hmm. And so I was given, you know, like we had a lot of obsidian points. So like arrowhead type things or spearheads or mm-hmm. knives that you would make out of this really sh- that shiny kind of black rock you may have seen. Yeah. And my professor was saying, you know, well, the best way to represent these things is pen and ink still. Mm-hmm. Cause you, you try to photograph them and it, they just refract light everywhere. Right. Can't get a good photograph. Same thing. If you try to scan them uh, in 3d, it's just, just hard mm-hmm. and you can't take them out of the country because treaties and mm-hmm. <laughs> laws mm-hmm. So you were going to just, we're going to do this in pen and ink and you have to measure it precisely, but you also have to know how it was made because you have mm-hmm. to see where it started and then you work out from there. And then every mark that you make on the page is telling you something about directional hit is telling you something about, you know, the depth of that. And I was like, Whoa, this is information that I'm drawing that someone's going to use across the world to study this thing. And he was like, and this is a job. Mm. And I was like, oh, well, that's, that's going to be my job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's, you know, that's one of the more basic things one can tell, I guess. But I, I was just so amazed at how much information you could pack into an image and information mm-hmm. that could be like extracted elsewhere. It's almost like this like code, you know, mm-hmm. and I, I thought that was really cool. Um, I, I do a lot less of that now. You know, I do a lot more like storytelling in my mm-hmm. images. Um, I kind of think of that as like first level images, like what you see in a void. And then like you get into like placing things in environments and time and then like connecting them to each other. And then, you know, adding all on top of that, the why do we care of it all and the emotional connection to the human viewing it and everything. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's kind of, I mean, people would be surprised, I think, how similar those concepts are to when you're telling a story about people or about animals or, you know, like, mm-hmm. you know, for, for popular culture. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's um, you're using a lot of the same tools and tricks to get people um, tuned in and invested in your work and caring about what they're looking at. I, I've been, uh, I, well, all of us have been to the doctor's office. And I, and and seen the the diagrams and cutaways of certain parts of the body and things like that. And 
Um, I noticed on your website, you have a lot of that. You, that's just like one of the things that you do. Um, it is, like you said, you're, you, you do a lot of different things, but, um, one of the things I've always been curious of is what, when you work with an art director or with the doctors or scientists, there's a lot of imagination that has to, to take place in order to draw those things. Cause you don't have a drawing to start with, you know, or maybe you do have other, other, do you ever look at other medical illustrators work? How does that, can you talk yeah. about that process a little bit? Yeah. yeah, I actually, I kind of, I realized I skirted a little bit around your question, which is I did do a couple anatomy labs, both mm -hmm. like dissection of animals. And then also I've done numerous cadaver dissections in medical schools. Wow. So um, just, just like you would, if you were training to be a doctor, um, wow. going through a couple months of dissecting um, a human body mm. and learning about everything learning, memorizing everything, going through the same process as the med students, um, wow. and then naming it off very fast, um, which is a pretty intense experience, but also, I mean, artistically, really, really valuable. Um, just, and, you know, we'd go and we'd dissect in the mornings for a couple hours, and then um, as students uh, in grad school, we'd go back and we'd draw the anatomy sketch all afternoon um, mm -hmm. from what we'd drawn that day, so in scrubs and just, you know, looking at the anatomy, making sure we know where everything is. So there, there's a base there. And then the other kind of important thing that you learn over time is uh, how to, you know, how to represent form that's not there. Because a lot of the stuff you're drawing is stuff you can't see, right? right. Molecules, mm -hmm. dead animals, <laughs> um, things inside the human body that you can't photograph. And even if you dissect or you you were able to open up and, and photograph someone uh a lot of the stuff looks the same it's all the same color or you know and that's uh, <laughs> that's where illustration comes in you know even right. if you're looking at pictures that neurosurgeons are taking as they uh start to um go into someone's brain a lot of the stuff is just all the same color and, and there's you know fluids everywhere and they have to know exactly where everything is so having someone do an artistic representation of that and and really get that correct um, is important. So it's, it's kind of a, it's a combination of uh, a lot of anatomical knowledge and experience, good references. So um, I don't have all my books here because I just moved in, but <laughs> lots of good reference from people who've gone before um, and done good dissections and, and knowing where those references can be found. And then also relying and working with working with experts like you would work with an art director. Mm -hmm. And the difference is sometimes you're kind of leading the process because they, you're the person who has, you know, the artistic knowledge. So you're kind of, you have to draw out of them what you need from them in a way. Um, uh, whereas like when I work with an art director, you know, they'll take the stuff, they'll come back and like, they, they really have their checklist down. Right. <laughs> They're, <laughs> They sometimes have more than enough to say about how I should improve something. Huh. But um, when you're working with scientists, sometimes, you know, they it's their first time working with an artist or sometimes they just don't know how to exactly say what they want to say. So it's kind of, I guess, um, it's often my job to go in and say, well, you know, I'm trying to do this, but um, how's this working for you? Let's let's talk about the anatomy. You know, mm -hmm. are you seeing anything that's jumping out at you? Is this? How's this working? Mm -hmm. How's that working? Going through everything. And then um, if they're, you know, catching on something that's not working, really, really digging into that critique and trying to like make them feel comfortable to have that space to. So it's, it's really like it's illustration, but it's also kind mm -hmm. of like being a bridge between the science world, which is often very convoluted and jargony and someone else. Mm -hmm. And that person might be a patient who has no idea how their body works. Mm -hmm. or so it might you, be someone else who does you know and it really depends like then you have to make visual choices on um who's your audience and how are they best going to receive that so am i going to go with a comic style that's very simplified or am i going to go with something that's like those images you see in the doctor's office that's very um very uh very detailed and very accurate mm -hmm. um clinical <laughs> yeah or, I, I, you know, it's something else. <laughs> go, go ahead, Will. I would imagine, I'm hope. well, I would imagine that you'd have a lot of respect from the people that you work with because they can't do what you can do. 
when we're lucky. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's actually, it's really interesting, you know, working with different types of people, you know, uh-huh. um, plastic surgeons always want to be artists. Oh, really? They yeah. always want to tell you about how they took art in college and like their art <laughs> classes on the side because they're very visual, you know, they mm-hmm. like, I don't think I've like ever met a plastic surgeon that didn't want to be an artist. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, <laughs> so they have res- uh, respect for you. Cause you're like, they're like, Oh, they, that could have been me. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they like, they appreciate, they appreciate the aesthetics that are yeah. that, that, like the work that goes into the creation of that. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and often they're, you know, they're, they've practiced art before. So yeah. Uh, some, some people are a little less, um, some people are a little less knowledgeable about what it takes to make an image. You kind of have mm-hmm. to educate them about mm-hmm. it. So uh, always going in with kind of an open mind is good. <laughs> and um, so you, yeah, you've been doing this in. how long? Did you say? Um, I started in my dorm room about 15 years ago. I'm 36 okay. now. So okay. um, I started in college and I, um, I've been doing it on and off like, continuously kind of during that whole time but i did a lot of uh, other jobs in the beginning mm-hmm. to supplement um and now i have been doing it full-time i finished grad school about seven years ago so mm-hmm. since then i've been full-time freelance all the time well and how many like i, I have two questions first how much yeah. of that is like digital can you work traditionally is there a preference does it matter is it just uh, you know um, uh, easier to work digital or is it easier to work traditional? Yeah. Um, I work almost a hundred percent digitally now. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like to do, I like to scan in a lot of textures. So I'll do like ink textures and mm-hmm. print textures and, and watercolor and stuff. And I'll incorporate those, but realistically just the amount of changes and sometimes the amount of layers that we'll work with if we're working on something really complicated um, it kind of depends on the job. Uh, I, I just, digital is just, you know, it's important for changes and edits and edits and edits and edits. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It can be, it can be fast, you know? So, um, I like to do traditional when I can, you know, I, I love it, but mm-hmm. I mean, similar to other industries, it's just like yeah. hours that you yeah. bench hours that you, you can't get back. So now you're working full time or you've been working full time. How many, like, what does that look like? Is it an illustration a week? Is it, um, you know, 12 jobs a year? Is it 50 jobs a year? What, what is that? Uh, I think last year, let's see. Well, last year I just did my finances, I guess I did like 120 invoices. Wow. Oh, wow. So, but it's a, it's a lot of like right now I've got, um, just look at my, my list. Um, I've got some website images. I've got some medical education ongoing. I'm doing a neurology textbook. I'm working on three Nat Geo projects. Um, I, I work with them as a researcher, but then sometimes I like draw the anatomy on mm. those big spreads that yeah. um, you pull out um, for the magazine. I'm doing what, what does a, that mean to work for them as a researcher? That's... Um, uh, well, I'll finish this and then I'll, I'll tell okay. you that because okay. that's a big question. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing something for Pfizer. Um, I'm doing a couple storyboards for um, like medical pharma um, animations and interactives that they do to convey the efficacy of their drugs or devices to their clients mm-hmm. or investors or patients. Sometimes one of them is a patient thing. Um, I'm doing a 3D animation about um, some cellular stuff to editorial science, popular, like magazine things to go out next month and a bunch of science for the zoo in DC. Mm. Um, and some anatomy puzzles and, a science game, like board wow. game. You are that's, busy. I think that's my deck right now. Yeah. Wow. It's a very busy, <laughs> it's a busy, yeah. busy life. <laughs> so it's, yeah, that varies. Some people work like primarily for one client or two clients. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty married and I, Mm -hmm. I like, I like the, you know, so you're you're definitely, (laughs) yeah, you're on someone's list where they're like, Oh, we need something. Let's call Mesa. She's the girl for this. Like, yeah, I have some clients I've worked with for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah. 
I'm curious, what is what is researching for National Geographic? What does that look like? Yeah, um, that's one of my favorite things to do, even though I, mm -hmm. I don't always get to do the art. I usually don't get to do the art, um, but it's a uh, it's it's kind of like the other cool thing about this career is you kind of have, get to have a toe in infographic world. Mm -hmm. And um, so you get to work with infographic designers and, and um, kind of and data and just kind of bringing data into into visual form. Yeah. Um, so I I've been working with them since I, I did an internship there as a I mean, I guess kind of a, basically a graphics assistant um, mm -hmm. years ago, almost 10 years ago. And um, now what they'll do is they'll they'll come to me and they'll be like, OK, <laughs> one of the editors will bring me on as their mm -hmm. kind of research assistant. And that will mean they'll often they'll say like pterosaurs mm -hmm. go <laughs> some sort of spread. And so then <laughs> and oh, like wow. that's yeah. And so sometimes it's like, okay, we're gonna do one page on, you know, octopus and we kind of want to focus on this, but like you give us a couple pitches for ideas and mm -hmm. and we'll see what you come up with. Um, and sometimes it's very defined and they just need like a little help with a couple things, but you often it's like, okay, pterosaurs go. So then I go and I read the literature and I find out who knows things about pterosaurs and who's, who are the pterosaur experts working today and what are the big issues in this field and what has been published before and what hasn't and what's cool about them and what might people be interested in. And then I'll dig up something like, okay, well, pterosaur, what do you guys know about pterosaurs? <laughs> That no, is, nothing. first off, that is like the coolest, that, you got me like excited. That was a really cool one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do I know about pterosaurs? I, uh, I know that they're everywhere. First off, they're not dinosaurs. They're reptiles. Um, yeah, they are, <laughs> they are very tiny uh, to the, like giraffe sized. <laughs> yeah. Look um, at you. Yeah. Uh, and, um, um, they mostly, I, I want to say they're mostly like water, like they like to hang out next to the water, right? There weren't very many land-based pterosaurs, maybe. I don't you know. Pretty well. Okay. And they That's had like two out of three. All right. And they had feathers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some kind of, or proto -feathers, furry, kind of yeah, furry, furry feather things. Uh, yeah, you're talking to like a guy who likes prehistoric. Clearly, someone like, who likes prehistoric yeah. animals. Yes, um. I do. <laughs> but I was you? I was on your website looking at the the spread, the National Ge Geographic spread with the pterosaurs on it, and so looking at that, is that something where you'll you're like, I like how much of that is you, and how much of it is, you know, the National Geographic so art team or whatever. Me. That, that artistically, that's the painting is uh, by Fernando Batista, who works. Mm -hmm. He's a graphics senior graphics editor there, who I worked right. with when I was there. But I I've worked with him on a lot of projects, and he's a fantastic. Um, <coughs> you just you guys should look him up. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, he's well, an amazing I'm a, artist. <laughs> I've been a subscriber to National Geographic for like so you're, 25, 30 years for, now. <laughs> so he's been there yeah, for it, like. 15 years now and um, yeah he's good he's uh, he's, he's from Pais Vasco in Spain he's Basque mm -hmm. and he um he did uh he's kind of a similar background to me he did reconstructions and freelance for years but then he was also an infographics professor in Spain for some years and he did the painting there mm -hmm. okay. I did a lot of the anatomy on that mm -hmm. one so like mm -hmm. the bones and things that are overlaid um yeah. I did uh like um, uh, cheat sheets for him. So I mocked that all up and I worked out mm -hmm. the anatomy and I checked that with all the experts. So what I do there is they say pterosaurs go and I go and do a bunch of research and I come back to them with a big research packet that's like mm -hmm. visual and scientific and experts that I plan to talk to and pitches for stories that we could tell. So one of those stories is pterosaurs are really variable. They're really tiny. They're giant. In fact, they're the largest things that have ever flown on earth. We birds can't get that big. Mammals can't get that big. How do they do it? Mm. The government is really interested and <laughs> they're, they're looking into this. So the engineering of it, the bioengineering, very mm -hmm. cool. Pterosaurs, uh, maybe people think they're kind of a failure species. 
or, you know, Mm. group of animals because they died off. But actually, they were so variable and they lived about as long as birds have been on Earth. So, like, they they stretched millions and millions and millions of years. They stuck around right. for so that that this, is a success. <laughs> so they're very successful, and they lived everywhere. It wasn't just near water; they lived mm, everywhere, okay. all sorts of environments. So they basically took over the world and um, lived in it for many many years. And so we wanted to show that, and then we wanted to show some of the weird and anatomy things that changed over time. Like they all lost their teeth at some point, and they just decided mm. we don't need teeth anymore, mm. and um teeth were gone completely um nobody knows why maybe just, there was a shortage of dentists so <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> that's such a dad joke good one well <laughs> <laughs> yeah so just like these different things how what are people going to be interested in and then how are you going to tell that story like how do you connect it to humans so we have the human flying there we have the human anatomy and a bird um I'm, I'm thinking about it in my head, but we have we have a giant pterosaur, and then we have a couple of smaller pterosaurs flying. You have a, uh, a bat, a bird, a, a human, and then a bunch of pterosaurs. Yeah. Which that was that's such a smart thing. Like, here's all the creatures that um, that fly. <laughs> like, let's put them together. Um, yeah, um, and we wanted to show how they do it differently. Because pterosaurs mm-hmm. do it completely differently than birds, and birds do it completely differently than bats, and they, there's all there's so there's three strategies that are being employed here to take to the air, and to kind of tell that story. So we we start to you know move things around on the page and and um, start to kind of block in what sort of text we're going to have, and and then we've got a timeline on the bottom because we want to show that mm-hmm. that stretch and we're moving all these things around and all these kind of puzzle pieces are getting fit together. But then you kind of have to take the the body text of the graphic and, and make it all flow. So you're kind of having this story that's being told throughout and you're hitting all the points you want to hit. So it's, it's really, it's months and months and hundreds of hours of work on the part of many people coming together. Um, but it's one of my favorite things to work on because it's just so many awesome people and um, uh, so much dedication to each one of these pieces, even if I'm not getting to draw the final art. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's just really cool to be involved with and to like, get to help craft that story. So, mm. yeah. yeah, that's so cool. That's a like, long no, and, and, and I'm glad you're like, well, we need to, this is a, a detailed answer because I look at these, um, A, the spreads in, in National Geographic are like my favorite, regardless if they're animals or if they're, you know, environmental or whatever. It's just, I like the information. I, I'm very much visual, obviously. Yeah. I'm a visual yeah. learner, so I, if I could see a timeline or I could see a graph or something like that, it just like clicks so much, so much easier. Um, so that's cool. And then you you mentioned three D. How much three D work do you do? Like, how much of that is a part of your your like illustration? What what are what program do you use? And do you feel like um, like it's absolutely necessary or it's a nice to have or, you know, it, you're, you're fiddling around with it or is it like it's absolutely essential? <laughs> it really depends. Um, mm-hmm. I think I think a lot of people get away with without it completely. Mm-hmm. I do. I do a fair bit of it. I use um, my main tools or Cinema 4D and ZBrush. OK. Um, and I, I do 3D animation. So I'll just mm. like someone will come in and I'll do a 3D animation and send it off. Oh, okay, so you already have all the, simple. yeah, they already have <laughs> um, the components there for you, and you can. Oh just no, no, I make or, them. Oh, you make Often them. Okay, I make them, or I gather them. So like, okay, right, like, I get uh, it. Yeah. Um, well, medical is actually really cool because you can take, you know, like you go to the doctor, you get a CT scan, you get an mm-hmm. MRI, you can take that data. That's three D data. You mm-hmm. take it. It's a DICOM file. You can export it. It's an OBJ or an STL, clean it up in Mesh Lab, run it through ZBrush, get rid of all the noise, change it around, segment it into different anatomical parts, and you have an anatomically accurate model wow. of like the chest cavity. <laughs> it's it's really, really so like a lot of the stuff, um, you know, I don't do it as much anymore, but at the beginning of my career in medical, I just spent mm-hmm. a lot of time like extracting and trying to create models of anatomy. Mm-hmm. Um so I have kind of a library. There's a lot yeah. online now too. It keeps growing all the time because like people are aware of this trick. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, you know, so there's some of it's that, and some of it's just modeling from scratch. 
Um, mm-hmm. uh, and some of it's getting assets online. Um, since I'm working with scientists, you know, and I'm not like in the entertainment industry so much, it often has to be more accurate than a lot of the stuff that's out there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that'll be built into the price. Um, like, okay. And it, it all depends on your client though. It's like, is this for patients and it's like a little simpler or is it this for who's it for and what are right. their needs is always. Yeah. And if their needs are really anatomically accurate, either we're going to buy one of the models that is now built. It's, it's like, you know, by medical artists who mm-hmm. are ensuring its accuracy, or we're going to take some anatomy and I'm going to like make a uterus that is mm-hmm. accurate. And, <laughs> and we're going to do stuff to it. You know, right. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's, kind of and, it's like, uh, it's not, yeah. see, it's not boring. Like it's always right. something quite interesting. <laughs> yeah. It seems like <laughs> every, <laughs> right. Every illustration assignment is so like a little bit different. It, 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 if you have yeah. any sort of attention deficit problem, this is like, mm-hmm. you know, you know, perfect for you. Right. Like, that's, yeah, that's my public service announcement is like not for everybody, but mm-hmm. for the, the, the right type of crazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> perfect. And that leads me into my next question, which is, I'm guessing you're not squeamish at, seeing no, blood and stuff like that. But, much. but for the artist that is you, on, on your website, you have a lot of um, animals and things like that, that aren't dissections and things like that. Do you think that there's um, in the, in the museum area, is there enough work that someone could make a career n- not doing the whole gamut of what you do, but um, you know, doing anthropological art and things like that. Yeah. Paleo yeah. art or something like that. You know, there's a lot, um, there's a lot in paleo, um, and archeological, it's hard to make a living in the U S there's much more of a tradition of it, um, in Europe. And actually Mm -hmm. when I worked in archeological art, most of my work was in Europe for, Mm -hmm. um, for, uh, I did three summer seasons in Turkey and, um, Mm -hmm. I did, I did a bit in Belize and some in Portugal and now, and then I've done some remote, but, um, I, I went that those times I went like right after college, I got a couple of jobs and they, they didn't pay very much, but it was great anyways. And I would go live on the site for a couple of months and just draw finds, um, artifacts that came out and then also reconstruct things like buildings and, um, and burials and, uh, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, and that's, that uh, museums have a lot of that sort of thing. There's a lot of interpretation. So interpretive design for signs and exhibits. Um, there's a lot of people working in, you know, in murals and, and in um, models. And a lot of modeling uses ZBrush now. They'll start with that um, and, uh, you know, start digitally and then kind of go to the physical model if they're gonna do that. Um, I would say, it's less in museums and things now than it is. um, There's just so much online education that um, there's so much room in, in my field for more people. Mm -hmm. Um, And and some of that's just science is publishing all the time. You know, it's Mm -hmm. not everyone's seeing it, but there's um, this totally under tapped resource of potential clients in science. Mm -hmm. They're publishing all the time. They have manuscripts going out all the time and, they aren't always the best at figures <laughs> or um, there's a huge industry now in visual abstracts, um, which are kind of trying to, it's like simplifying your paper to get it noticed mm-hmm. and understood in a simplified oh. way visually. <clears throat> That's a great idea. And people have really been catching on because um, they've, you know, they've done studies and they show that engagement and readership goes up through the roof when you do a visual abstract, mm-hmm. obviously. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like I, I don't think that's surprising to anyone here, but <laughs> um, yeah. And, and videos too, they're doing like more explainer videos. There's just, there's so much space now that the mm-hmm. internet is here that like the, these niches, I guess, for science artists um, are expanding, but it's not so much. I, I like to tell people, I guess it's not like, it's not so much you're going to go and just draw artifacts or you're going to go and draw specimens anymore. That's like mm-hmm. level one. You mm-hmm. you do that first and you learn how to do that and you learn how to like show light on form and make it realistic and then 
how to, you know, simplify that also, if you want to tell a simpler story. And then, and then once you gain all those tools in your toolbox, like you do in any other um, art world, then you move forward and you move into like the levels of interpretation and storytelling that go on top of that. And then you can be, you know, you can do uh, explainer videos or you can do 3D animation or you can do building giant things for medical um, booths as they mm-hmm. go and they, mm-hmm. they learn about, like, I, I know um, one uh, studio in my industry built a giant, like pulsating tumor that people would oh, go wow. into in this medical oh, convention. Wow. And they would go in and there's like all this video media and stuff. And it's just like insanity. I don't know. <laughs> so there's, there's so, like a lot of studios, they get to do big group projects like that. So um, I don't yeah. get to do so much of that. I get to do some of the storyboarding. Sometimes I'll like contract for them doing storyboard or concepting work, but um, it's not, um, and it, it's akin to what you would do in storyboarding or concepting in general illustration, mm-hmm. just medically themed. You're yeah. still like, you know, making your characters, seeing what they're going to look like, doing like color comps and, um, you know, going through the, that whole process. And, um, yeah. Uh, and then there's, there's a lot of non-medical work, just medical is, um, Medical is kind of the top of the heap in terms of pay and employment, I would say. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. I had an interest anyways, but it definitely, my life got easier after I went to medical illustration grad school (laughs) Um, than it was before. But there's jobs outside of that. And a lot in, I guess I should say also a lot in science editorial. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of people end up there. So like, um, um, What's the range for like a medical job and pay? Like, I, I understand there's budgets there. I know Will did like a children's book for um, what was Merck. it for Merck? Yeah, for Merck, and it was like the the paycheck you got was pretty impressive for that. But I'm massive. just curious, like the yeah, low that end. was. It's funny. This was my next question too. I I would imagine you do really well. I do pretty well. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I'll be honest. I, um, before grad school, I was, um, I mean, I was doing it part-time and I was like bartending and waitressing mm-hmm. while I got my skills up. And I was also like, you know, I was doing, you know, the kind of classic young artist thing and like, go do my internship, take my bike with my stuff on my back. And then uh, afterward I bike to the bar and work all night. And then I'd go <laughs> home and I'd work on my freelance and then I'd you know, pass out for a few hours and then I'd get back on the bike and like right. did that for a couple of years. Um, before then I was really scraping by, um, mm-hmm. with, uh, like, I think the first year I, I felt like I made it. I think I made $35,000. And that was the mm-hmm. year I was like, I'm a hundred percent supporting myself in art. Yay. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> since grad school, I've been pulling in six figures. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. as a freelancer. So yeah, that's really it's, good. It's been good. Yeah. Uh, I could, I can do this for the rest of my life. I'll be happy. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Some institutional jobs run a little bit lower, but like a medical artist coming out of grad school is probably going to jump in at high sixties to, mm-hmm. um, to eighties. Mm-hmm. Is, is um, that like freelance? A, a, no, that's a institutional. Oh, oh working um, in, <laughs> like, uh, in a hospital. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, uh, it's, it's good money. Um, Mm -hmm. it's, it is a, it's a small field. Natural science runs a bit lower and I I have seen some university things for much lower, more like what I was making before Mm -hmm. grad school. Mm -hmm. Um, but you said, um, after coming out of grad school, I'm sorry. Yeah. I I, I was saying, um, you, you said coming out of grad school. So is there, is there, um, a master's degree for medical illustration? Yeah. Oh, wow. um, in North America, there's four schools. There's a, mm-hmm. there's one at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. Uh, there's one in Georgia. They keep changing their name, but I think they're currently regents. I might be wrong about that. Um, and then there's one in Chicago and one in Toronto. And then there's a couple of programs in Europe um, that mm-hmm. are a little shorter. The, all the ones in the U.S. and, and Toronto are two years of pretty much mm-hmm. just a hundred percent of the time doing art, mm-hmm. sleep in the studio style art school. Um, and it's is, kind of a mix of 
art. You, you have at least the one I went to. It's a very small program. There's seven of us in my class. And you kind of just move with your class through a series of project-based courses. First, kind of hammering down fundamentals. So like, you know, watercolor and atlas and grayscale project mm-hmm. coupled with biological and um, you know, patient education, Adobe Illustrator, vector art, you know, and just making sure everyone's kind of up to speed, but at the same time, kind of throwing projects at you overlapping. So you're starting to get the flow of what uh, your life is going to be like Mm -hmm. and um, Mm -hmm. how you can handle that. And then, um, uh, then you, you also learn 2d and 3d animation. And then once you've kind of gone through your first year, hopefully they've kind of got you a little bit up to speed on all the art stuff you may not have gotten previously and um, the general categories of illustration you might be going into. And then you start a thesis project. And then um, at Hopkins, we did a year of a good <coughs> surgical as well, where I do, you, know, you get up early in the morning, you put on your scrubs, you go in and you see a couple surgeries and you do sketches. And then mm. you um, take them back to your studio and you, you go through them and you, you find, um, it's almost like doing a comic strip. Like mm. what are the, the action moments, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and surgery, actually surgery, strangely, is like a video game. It's um because surgeons, and they always say surgeons are so good at video games, like the, the best surgeons are great at video <laughs> and games. And coordination and, and yeah. That, but also it's like levels. Surgeons mm. are all about framing and levels. So they're like, okay, I'm starting my brain surgery. I'm going to go in here and I have to do this. And then I, I have to clear the field and clean it all up until I get to the next level. And then when you're done with that, that first step, you can find the anatomical landmarks. It's like you're unlocking like this Mm -hmm. hidden world and then you know where to cut without hurting someone. Right. And you go to the next level and then you have to clean that all out and find everything. And once you've found all the things and put them into your um, viewport in a way, clean them up, making sure you're not hurting anything that you could hurt. That's very vital to survival. Then you get to cut to the next level. So hmm. like, it's, it's kind of almost like illustrating, mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't, I don't know if the, the analogy there is um, it's not perfect, but it's, it's, um it's definitely a certain unique way of illustrating right. something. Mm-hmm. You got to be really aware of what they're concerned about. Mm-hmm. You know, they're like, Oh, hy- hypogastric, you know, this, this is very important or this nerve or this vessel. Oh, if you nick that, that's the end, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it's, it's, um, it's important. yeah. So, okay. I'm just trying to piece this together now for someone listening. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm throwing like, a lot of stuff at you. No, no, it's, it's good. This is like a ton of yeah. information that, that it's a I, lot of information, I did not know. I but <laughs> so you're a person who is good at drawing. You're, you, you have a, uh, a love for it, a passion for it. You're maybe not into, uh, you, you like representational art, right? Yeah. So, and you have a, an appreciation or love for science, biology, things like that. Um, and maybe you like to travel <laughs> and maybe you don't mind. You do it from anywhere. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I'm just trying to paint the picture of who's the person yeah. that's, that this is perfect for. And then what do they, what do they do? Do they have to go through one of these programs? Yeah. Can they be self-taught? Can they, um, do they need to have a, a, a biology degree or, or, you know, pre-med or something like that? Um, like what would, let's chart that course and then, yeah. um, and, and kind of see where someone can go from, you know, maybe a high school student listening or someone in college oh. listening to being Mesa Schumacher. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, honestly, the best thing you can do if like, and I feel like, I feel a little bit like people who are kind of drawn to science are mm-hmm. kind of know who they are. Like mm-hmm. it, yeah. it either hits or it doesn't um, in a way. I um, guarantee yeah, there's yeah. a handful of people listening to this right now. They're just like, And I'm oh talking to you out there. Yeah. <laughs> this is you for me. Who is out there, you know, drawing beetles right now. Um, <laughs> someone who's very interested in understanding and, and representing the world around them. Mm -hmm. who is, you know, um, who has an attention for detail and, Mm -hmm. and for, and for explaining things in their own mind, making sense of things and, um, and has a curiosity 
for mm-hmm. understanding how things work. Um, kind of the founder of my practice, I guess, the, the guy who founded the Hopkins program, um, Max Bradle, he said, you know, you can't draw something unless you understand it. Mm-hmm. And I think we know that as artists, you, you mm-hmm. do have to understand something on, on a very form level before you can draw it. And in science art, you, you got to understand the system or what you're trying to convey before you can draw it. So if you like puzzles, visual puzzles in a way, mm-hmm. um, this might be for you. Mm-hmm. And if you're in high school or in college, um, if you're in high school, you're really lucky. And I, sometimes I get high schoolers talking to me and that's awesome. Like yeah. you're so ahead of the game. <laughs> there's a couple, there's actually a couple of undergrad programs you can go to. Um, oh. and I'm not going to know them all. There's a, there's one very long lived one in Iowa mm-hmm. in Iowa state. that A lot of people go to and they come out and they just have a bachelor's and they work. And, um, okay. usually in natural science mm-hmm. and some medical, some medical, um, there's an RIT program. Um, that is medical. They don't have cadaver dissection, but that's pretty much the only thing they don't have. So they have a little bit less medical and clinical interaction than mm-hmm. the grad stu- uh, schools, but they, they produce illustrators who work without a master's um, mm-hmm. very successfully and they're great. Um, so if you're in high school, like those are some options right away. And some of those people go, especially from Iowa, a lot of those people will go and it's kind of a feeder program to grad s- schools. Um, and then there's there's a couple of other programs that uh, they kind of pop up and disappear. So I'm not, I think there's one in Augusta now, um, Georgia. I might be wrong about that um, for natural science as well, undergrad. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can also go to art school or you can go and get a bio degree. Most people who enter this field went to one of those and then kind of supplemented the other one. So I, I went, I got an, a physical anthropology degree. Mm-hmm. But I had bio core. I had a lot of biology courses. I had, you know, mm-hmm. developmental bio, molecular, all these things. Um, and then I actually, I just, for a long time, I taught myself online, mm-hmm. um, the art portion. I took a couple courses. And um, then I went back and I did um, a graduate certificate program in natural science illustration at the University of Washington, which is no longer in existence. But there's a couple of those around. Um, so that's another option. Um, and they'll do, you know, they'll teach you how to conventions and things, and they'll teach you how to represent things more, um, realistically. And they're, they're doing a better job of more digital, uh, these days than they were when I went. Um, and then I supplemented my fine art or, you know, my traditional art skills with, uh, atelier schools. So Mm -hmm. I went to Gage Academy in, um, in Seattle for a bit. I didn't do an atelier, but I just took a lot of courses. And I showed up to figure drawing all the time and um, just did a lot of hanging out there, um, mm-hmm. drawing all the time. <laughs> so, so yeah, I kind of, I kind of like pieced together my, my career. And, um, and then I did a couple of internships and that was really helpful, you know, to get the mentorship of people who are working in the field and, yeah. and that to kind of network. Mm-hmm. I feel like to make it, you need, you need art skills, right? You mm-hmm. need art fundamentals. You need some some skill, some technical skill, and some aptitude, I suppose. Um, mm-hmm. You need um, some science knowledge. You need some communication skills. Mm-hmm. So to be able to talk to people in science and understand what they're saying, and then to mm-hmm. communicate that. So learning how to kind of bridge that gap um, mm-hmm. visually uh, is very helpful. A little bit of business skills if you're going into freelance. A little mm-hmm. less, I guess, if you're going into an institution, but it certainly doesn't hurt. And then, of course, a network, just like you would gain anywhere. So if you're going to get that from art school, that's great. If you're going to get that from a grad school, that's great. Or you can go and join an organization. Our two kind of main organizations are the GNSI, the Guild of Natural Science Illustrators, which is kind of more education and a little bit more watercolor in the woods. And mm-hmm. a lot of scientists join as well. And <laughs> It's like kind of, it's just like, but it's for education. It's a nonprofit for education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then my professional guild is, um, or professional organization, I guess, is the Association of Medical Illustrators. And that, um, actually anyone can join as a trial member for, I believe it's free for a year. So we have Mm -hmm. some students, you know, just checking it out. And um, there's a mentorship program. I'm a mentor, you know, you get hooked up with someone and like, you get to just talk with them about it and what your goals might be and connects you with working artists. Um, Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's great to connect with those two. That's the first thing I did. I went and I talked to people and I was like, what do you actually do? And what, 
what does one need to know? And um, right. some artists like had me into their workspace. They said, hey, look, come on into the hospital. Look at me. I'm doing knee surgery. Check it out. <laughs> and uh, other people were really generous with their time, just sending me emails or talking to me on the phone and saying, well, OK, where are you at and what do you need to do? And um, they told me learn digital art like yesterday. And that was mm -hmm. one of the best pieces of advice I ever got, because then I was in mm -hmm. college, you know, after courses, I'd go to the computer lab and they happened to have Photoshop and I would just do that. And I'd go on yeah. Lynda.com at the time, now mm. LinkedIn Learning and <laughs> just, you know, then to that to the HBSLearn.com. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and well, and now I'm doing this like forever student, right? Actually, so, yeah. So coming on SBS is fun because I'm I'm bad at this. So I'm getting to do something I'm bad at, which is always kind of fun, <laughs> right? So how important is having a website, um, having social media, th those types of things to this sort of career? Yeah, um, I think it's a little less important to be a social media mogul in mm -hmm. this career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not like I'm not great on social media. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I mostly hang out on Twitter, I guess, because I like there's a, a lot of my industry people are there art directors in my field are there yeah mm -hmm. uh scientists are there you know infographics artists are hanging out there so i, I feel like the conversations are better for me mm -hmm. there than, than instagram I, I kind of i hate instagram i really hate it <laughs> but i also like am way late to the game on instagram i, uh -huh. I just refused for so long to partake that mm -hmm. i missed out on mm. like the wild west and now right yeah there's no getting in now <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's um, changed so much lately too. I was just yeah. looking at it this morning. I'm like, I'm not enjoying this app right now. <laughs> like, yeah. I like their visual layout, and that is literally mm -hmm. the only thing I like about yeah. it. You know, yeah. And but like, like if you're going to go look at someone's portfolio, mm -hmm. it's kind of the best one, right? Right. Yeah, that's um, true. But but I yeah, I actually have a, a love for LinkedIn these days. I get a lot of work mm -hmm. off of LinkedIn, so I I've been doing cool. kind of a pretty aggressive ad campaign in the last year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, well, along but like, yeah it's it's important as you grow but you certainly don't need to be on it to be a very successful science artist so and those yeah. jobs then where are they coming from um um i mean a lot of people work in-house and there's more mm -hmm. and more in-house jobs i've been seeing mm -hmm. lately a lot are in-house remote as well mm -hmm. now i have a oh, ton wow. of colleagues and friends who are working for companies across the country never go into the office, fully mm -hmm. employed, very happy mm -hmm. salaries. And uh, there's going to be just be more and more of that. Um, I've been doing it for years myself, mm -hmm. but during the pandemic, it's just like exploded the amount of mm -hmm. people who are willing to work with me remote wow. on yeah. larger contracts. So yeah, uh, that that's only going to get more, you know, for everybody, I think, but definitely for medical because medical, it's like suddenly everyone realized you want expertise but you can't entice someone to come out to Kentucky or something right. like that. Mm. <laughs> and, and you're not willing to put them up. And like, so right. how do you get that? Well, they'll work for you online. It's fine. Mm -hmm. um, what, what about so, um, yeah. a representation? Do you have a rep to help you get the jobs or do you just have, um, have you developed these relationships over time that. Um, I, I don't have a rep. I do all my own. Uh, I do my own stuff, um, which is kind of exhausting, right? Mm -hmm. But but I have to keep all the money. <laughs> but I, I yeah, you keep to keep all the money, and and I honestly, I've been kind of considering hiring like an admin person or something recently. Mm -hmm. I've I've been like doing a little bit of subcontracting out of admin work, um, and like assistant work, which is mm -hmm. great. I love that. Mm -hmm. I want to delegate more. I'm like learning how to delegate later in my career yeah. here. And I'm like, I'm loving it. It's the best thing that I've ever done. Um, but it's hard to find someone who can sell your specific skills mm. in that. Like I have kind of a pitch that I've developed over time, you know, that I feel like works pretty well when mm -hmm. I get someone on the phone and, and I, I just, you know, I'd really have to like, I'd have to find someone who knows exactly all the things I do. Um, yeah. So yeah. I'm always trying to recruit my husband, but he like, he's not having it. Not <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someday well, if he gets fed up with his job. <laughs> I'm another along the, kind of along the line of, of income. But some people there, do have reps. I should yeah. say some people have reps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
what are the opportunities for like passive income here? Can you license your illustrations out? Is that a viable option? Is that a thing people do? Yeah, I would say, um, I'm trying to think of our last, like we were like an industry survey. I think, um, maybe 10% of people make some sort of significant portion on licensing. Mm -hmm. Um, I do a little bit of licensing and I make a little bit of money off of it, but, um, Mm -hmm. not, it's not my main focus. But there's okay. like all the charts, you know, all the charts mm-hmm. you see and um, yeah. and stuff like that. They, some people own those and they've been making money off of those for years. Mm, right. You know, there, there was a big company actually called the Anatomical Chart Company that made all those. They're all like a bunch of them were done in airbrush back in mm-hmm. the day. You can tell next time you go to yeah. your doctor's office. Like <laughs> see, if, see if you can tell if it was airbrush or if it was a later edition digital. Right. Um, and yeah, but th- there's a bunch of still working medical artists who are involved in those, but then a couple of people own the rights and they, mm. they license them all over the world That's cool. as well as cell prints. You know. So um, you're, yeah. you're in Fiji. Why are you in Fiji? Um, nothing to do with me, but my, my husband is a diplomat. So he oh, represents wow. oh. the U S for econ for Fiji and the surrounding mm. Island countries here. Um, okay. Kiribati, Tonga, Vanuatu, and Tuvalu. Oh, Did you so feel the uh, volcano? So it was insane. Every, <laughs> first of all, I will say that was a crazy event. Anyone mm-hmm. who doesn't, I think everyone is aware of the Tonga volcano at yeah. this point. Uh, yeah. I mean, so crazy. I was making dinner. <laughs> I was making dinner and my kids were running around and um, I have a, a one-year-old, almost two, and a four-year-old. Mm-hmm. And we just come in from the back, like the backyard. And suddenly I heard what I thought sounded like rolling thunder, but it also Mm -hmm. was kind of shaking the ground. And my back door blew open. The blast blew open my back door over, I think, God, we're like 500 500 plus miles away. Oh my gosh. And my son, the one-year-old, he said, oh, ooh, Volcano. (laughs) He just knew. Well, he like he thinks everything is volcano. So we were like, "Yeah, right, Dune. Here you go again, crying volcano." Um, But he was right for once. He was right. Um, Like when it rains here, he's like, "Oh, volcano." Yeah. yeah. Thunder. But he, it's like he a won't. broken <laughs> clock is is right, you oh know, God. twice a day or whatever. Once in his life, he <laughs> felt a real. <laughs> That's amazing. Good so, did him. you have to deal with um, uh, any sort we of swells fine. or anything? Okay. We we had a little bit of tsunami, but like the tsunami mm-hmm. was tiny. Um, yeah. Apparently, Fiji doesn't get that many tsunamis. I think it's because we have so many trees here. I'm, I'm new to the oh, country, so I okay. haven't really explored as much as I would normally like because we've got little kids, so we're kind of a little locked down. Right yeah. now, yeah. Um, can I can I give you my uh, knowledge on tsunami? <laughs> yeah. From, from what I understand, it's the places that have a shallow sea floor that that where the wave can really stand up That's high. That's true. Yeah. So I've if it's deep that. around, you know, the the islands, it, the wavelength has to go from the ocean floor all the way to the surface, and it just can't mm-hmm. be as big. If anyway. Yeah. yeah. That's. Well, I think that's the case here. We're pretty, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got, I guess one of the outer islands got hit with a pretty big one. And I think Vanuatu got some. Luckily, I was going to say, luckily, there has not been a lot of death. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. we, like, this is really lucky that well, we had yeah. such a huge event. And it, it mostly, you know, most people in Tonga got to safety and they're rebuilding. So, mm-hmm. But yeah, it was it was pretty wild. Wow. I have two more questions. I think we'll, yeah. we'll unless you have something else, Will, I think we'll nope, call it we good. Got it through mine. Number yeah. one, <laughs> um, <laughs> who are the rock stars in medical illustration that like we should know about? Besides I, yourself. I honestly don't I on no, I honestly don't have an answer for that. Um, okay. because people do such like every time I get to go to a conference. Mm-hmm. I like, I go to a couple days and I've like 
do a little bit of like fetal position in my room for a while because people are doing such cool stuff that uh-huh. I go back and I'm like, I'm becoming irrelevant. I have to learn more stuff. It's, it's just like, uh, cause it, cause some people are working in, you know, people are working in interactives. People are working in surgical 3d teaching. Mm-hmm. People are AR too. I'm models. sure people. Yeah. Yeah. VR. It just, and people are working with surgeons to make better implants, you know, to go in the body. People are doing such cool stuff. It's so hard to say, you know, mm-hmm. who's at the top of their game. Cause I feel like people mm-hmm. are just killing it in all their mm-hmm. little niches. Actually, I should say it's such a collaborative field. It's mm-hmm. really, it's, I mean, everyone's competitive. Like I don't, <laughs> is it possible to make it as an illustrator if you're not somewhat of a competitive person? Right. Yeah. I, I don't think it is. Like you have to have some sort of drive, right? right? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, this is this is what I'm willing to suffer for mm-hmm. is art. Right. I, I wasn't right. willing to suffer for research biology, but I'm willing to suffer <laughs> for this. Right? right. Where's your pain tolerance for a particular thing? And that's so that's where you know you need art, to like yeah. It's like through the roof. Mm-hmm. But for other things less so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. Um, I totally forgot what we were talking about. It's just who the who the rock stars are. Oh yeah, and, and that, that, it, it means that she's one of them, Jake. If she just no. if she can't name well, them, well, I feel like we, we people are really no, but 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 like just to harp on kind of the collaborative nature, I guess when COVID started, mm-hmm. my people in my industry immediately banded together on like our in house hubs. And mm-hmm. put together Google Docs where we all just dumped information that we were getting oh. from our clients. And we worked together on stuff. And people would say, wow. I'm looking for more information on the connections of the spike protein for this. And someone else is saying, this research group is doing this. And here's the research that they're sharing with us. And we're putting. And so we were like, everyone is working together on yeah. this to make this better. Because we're all trying to get everything right and get it mm-hmm. um, out. And, and people are working on you know, patient stuff. People are working on researcher publications that are pushing things forward. People and and everyone is just like the document suddenly grew to like a hundred pages long, and you just with all these annotated things, and it's just. And some of the people working on it were just working on it for fun. Like mm-hmm. some people didn't even have a client. They're just like, I have some spare time, and I want to just dive into this. And that is just like I just have the most awesome colleagues in a way. That's cool. They're That's really. Cool really cool people and always willing to help. You know, if I have trouble with a 3d mm-hmm. animation that I'm working on, I can go on various lists and say, Hey, blah, 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 blah. And someone might mm-hmm. even take a look at my file and fix it for me. <laughs> like, it's just <laughs> That's like, amazing. I just don't know That's if, really that, cool. um, if that exists in other areas of illustration mm-hmm. in the same way. It's, well, I know um, in the animation industry, there is a, that competitive thing can can really come into play where people don't want to mm-hmm. share files, don't want to mm. share techniques, don't, you know, um, yeah. luckily at, at where I was at at blue sky, it, everyone was pretty open and it's like, Oh yeah. yeah, here, let me show you how I do that. Here's my brush or whatever. But I've heard other studios. It's like, mm, I'm not gonna, this is my technique. I don't want to give you an edge. Whatnot. Okay. Last question yeah. and nothing to do with, it's more on the, on the travel thing. You mentioned you went to Turkey and I was, did you make it over to Gobekli Tepe and check out that archaeological site? So I, I worked with people who worked on that one. I was at okay. Chateauhuyuk. Uh, which one? Oh. Ch- uh, but mm-hmm. Chateauhuyuk. <laughs> it's got like a million different little annotations on right. Um, it. Right. It's spelled like C-A-T-A-L-Y. I'm going to mess it up. But... Kind of, if you type that in, you'll find Mm it. Um, But it's a really cool site. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, um, Kind of a post-modern archaeological hub. But um, yeah, yeah, Turkey's got some great archaeology. It does. Um, I got to do a little bit of touring to different sites. Okay. Um, But yeah, I didn't make it there, sadly. All right. Well, I think that's it. (laughs) That's it for, for us. Yeah. Why, I mean, why did you ask, Jake? I'm go fascinated Tepe. by Gobekli Tepe. I think it's, you, it's... Did you listen to Graham Nash? Have you listened to him talk about it? I have listened to him talk about okay. it, but more so, it, I, like, it just... It was a great first, spread on that. 
Yeah. I believe, I, the, yeah. But Fernando did. That was Fernando's work. Right. And he built that. He built a little model. He's he's all about like model building and stop motion. I saw his. Um, he like posted about it, and he's like, "Here's here's everything that went into this." And I was like, "Dang, this is he's, so cool." He's just a monster of yeah. work. That Maybe that's we'll have a him come on. In my, you should. He's very personable about these things. He's like, I've, he's awesome, and he's helped his, so many. He's so nice to like artists entering the field. He gave me yeah. my first big job. I and oh, I will cool. always be grateful. He was like. Cool. I came into work one day, I'm, you know, like the, the intern is like, I think I have a job for you. Bring your portfolio quick, quick, quick. You know? <laughs> wow. I have and, to get um, his contact yeah. info from you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm sure he'd love to. He's, he's very, very sharing with art and, uh, cool. and he does fantastic work. So. All right. Well, yeah. thank you. Yeah, well, thank you this, guys. Was, this was good. Yeah. <laughs> we will, we will never um, let Lee bag on medical illustration again. Never again. Thank you. And well, I hope, I don't know. I hope some people, you know, out there listening are kind of, this is, this hits home for you. And if so, yeah, Absolutely. come find us because we'd love to talk to you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But thank you guys. Thanks for extending the offer to have me on after I bashed you in the comments. <laughs> <It's all good. laughs> no, I, I really like the work you guys do. In that. Uh, I love that you're so honest. So keep it up. Um, you, you, I don't know. You touch on a lot of stuff. I feel like young illustrators really should know. Mm -hmm. And I love your kind of your business focus and stuff too. Cause it, it's just, yeah. I mean, I, I work alone in a studio and, and I've like made every mistake in the book <laughs> and gone through every like client disaster and, um, you know, been sad over learning how to do finances and setting up businesses and websites and blah, blah, blah. And it's just, it's a lot of stuff, but you know, it's nice to have community out there and hear that other people are going through the same things. So yeah, cool. keep doing the good work, guys. All right. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. We'll see ya. Yeah, bye. I totally, you know, feel like this could have been a career path for me. Had oh, I, really? Had I known about it. Maybe yeah. not so much medical, but definitely uh, archaeological, paleontology, you know, I anything that. National Geographic. Like, Let you dry, <laughs> draw a dinosaur once a month and you're happy. Yeah, pretty much. I have Amongst to. the and other I, things that you'd have to do that you wouldn't like I have like this as much. in front of me at all times. <laughs> just, I just love yeah. my little For those that are watching on YouTube, you can see that he's holding <laughs> up a... What what kind of dinosaur is that? A T-Rex? This is a T-Rex. It's okay. the most um, anatomically correct um, T-Rex model that I've seen for sale Um on uh, like on this level. This is like a museum. They say is, it's a museum grade um, toy, I guess. Is the smell... Museum grade. I mean, is the, did they get that accurate? They did. It's it or smells it, just like a T Rex did. Smell like rubber years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us. Three Point Perspective is made by uh, is made possible by SVSLearn.com. We're becoming a great illustrator. Starts your hosts have been Will Terry, Jake Parker, and Lee White. Again, Lee White couldn't make it today. He is out on assignment. But you could find Will Terry's work at WillTerry.com and all over on Instagram at WillTerryArt. Um, Lee White can be found at LeeWhiteIllustration.com and over on Instagram at LeeWhiteIllo. And I'm over at MrJakeParker.com and on Instagram at Jake Parker. Podcast produced by Daniel Two. You can find his work at Daniel2.co. That's T U C dot C O. Special thanks to Master of Production, David Bro. Keeper of the Curriculum, Austin Shirtliff, Chief Operations Officer, Lisa Fott, and a thank you to Lily Howell for our show notes. Now, go draw something. <laughs>